Good evening. Get this time for another video. As I've said before, um, I like to answer questions that I'm actually asked on the Discord, if I can do. Just to make these things a little bit more interesting, so you guys know what I'm talking about, and you know, and people are actually getting some interaction with me, which is really, really nice. Um, so. Today we're going to be talking about a few things. One, I wanted to talk about staff nights out, especially uh, ones that I've had when I've been involved in the hobby before, um, which have all been really, really, well, debauched, interesting, to say the least, but, you know, we'll get into that in a minute. And the second thing, somebody asked me before, what happens to stock in a hobby store? Because obviously, you know, we all want it, right? What happens to stock in the hobby store when, um, when it's damaged? Now, in terms of Games Workshop, just before I go into the main part of the video, in terms of Games Workshop, you, if anything is damaged, uh, say, in delivery, so we would get a delivery once a week to the store, and it would be a UPS van would turn up, and out of this there would be a big, massive box full of things that uh, the system had said that we'd sold, and we'd restock it on the shelves, that kind of thing. And... Fair enough, you know, it was one of my favourite days. I, lo I loved um, on yeah, reboxing, uh, not reboxing. Um, I loved stocking the shelves and stuff like that because it was really cool, especially when you got new releases. That was really, really cool. But if it was a new, if it was a new release I wanted because then I'd just immediately buy it <laughs> in the till. It's like, bonk, first sale. Um, so, if something comes into the store damaged, and uh, this is the Games Workshop policy anyway, the one I was there. Uh, we would just literally known loss it. So we would go on the system and say, look, it's known loss, it's damaged. Um, didn't ask for any evidence or anything like that. They said known loss, damaged. And that's it, it's gone. And they, they said, yeah, just, just break it up, throw, throw it in the bin. Um, I know for a fact, right, that a lot of managers, if something came in that they couldn't sell, um, like a box had, a, had, a, had been chewed by rats or it had been broken open or it was bent or even there was sprues missing from inside, they would take it home. Right? I, I, I got one at return once where I refunded a guy because he came in with his Primaris Marines and said, look, you know, I, I've got these Primaris Marines and I've got this uh, up, upgrade sprue. There's a there's a sprue missing from each. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, okay. Uh, so I opened it. And for all I know, he's taken the sprue out and I want his money back. But at the end of the day, what are you supposed to do, right? So I refunded him, put it away. And said, okay, cool, cool. But I thought, well, no, those are coming home with me. and I need to put them in the bin now. Those are coming home with me. So I would I'd snip them all up and i put them in a bits box, right? So I could build stuff in store. So I put them, I put them in a bits, bits box. And that's uh, a lot of the time in Games Workshop stores, when they have bits boxes, um, generally it's stuff that's been returned that they've just snipped up and put in into a nice big bits box for people to, to, to rummage through. Um so normally, yeah, when stuff's damaged and when stuff's um, come through the till that, that needs to be sent away, uh, Games Workshop, out of sight, out of mind, they really don't care. They're like, okay, uh, well, it's damaged, well, can't sell it, so we've taken it off the system, that's it, we'll send you a new one, thank you. And that's it. Um, if you wanted to use stuff in store, for like, say if you got an in-store project and you wanted to, like, say, create a bit of scenery, a bit of table scenery, I, I had to do this a few times, or you had a project where you wanted to, you know, um, have a diorama in the window, you know, or something like that. You would just need to do exactly the same process. You'd go on the computer, you'd known lost something, uh, or you could request stock. You could you could request known lost stock, which basically means that they they make they send it to you knowing that it's it's not going to get sold. And so if you wanted to take it, uh, like a diorama, let's say of Imperial fists fighting, let's say Chaos Space Marines. And you wanted like three squads on a diorama, you know, you go and get yourself uh, some scenery, some uh, sector imperialis spaces, some bits and bobs, things like that. Obviously, the models, you know, you'd want uh, bits of um, corroded, you know, you have lots of paints, things like that, spray paints, big scenery brushes, and you get them all sent to your store, and they would come in, and and you you do it, um, and that to me was basically what the what the process was. It, it was super, super simple. Um, and you were able to go and, and get going. One of my really worst hobby projects that I did at Games Workshop that I really hated was I, I built this 
um, I built this uh, Arctic base, this Arctic, you know, um, battlefield, and it just came out looking really shit. <laughs> it just looked pants. Like, in my mind, it looked really good, and I was like, yeah, we'll have this river running through here, it's frozen, so I'm going to use PVA glue. That came out really nice. You know, there was a river running across the entire board, and it looked super cool. It looked like, you know, it was PVA glue, and then I frosted it over to make it look like ice. Brilliant. That or snow itself looked a bit naff. Um, that's because Games Workshop kept set, kept sending me their own Citadel snow, and I wasn't allowed to use third-party snow. So, you know, and they, they, they can tell, and they will tell. If they come in, they will tell, and they will be very annoyed. Um, so, yeah, Citadel snow isn't that good. Isn't very good at all. So, yeah, using that stuff just, just it didn't, didn't do it for me. But anyway, um, that's what happens when stuff's uh, known lost. Um, you know... Now I think about it, I didn't actually get that many models through that through doing that. I know a lot. I know a few managers who I'm not going to name, obviously, who have had entire armies just disappear. Go, oh my god, there's this, there's a there's a, a space marine. You know, they're doing Eldar. Oh my god, there, there's an, there's an Eldar Guardian set that is, is there's a hole in it. Ooh, better known lost that, and in the rucksack it goes. You know, um, because and a lot of the a lot of the people who I would talk to, the reasons for this is, I can't afford to do the hobby that I'm being paid to promote. Um, I'm not being paid enough, they would say, to do the hobby. So fuck them. You know, like, one, you know, if, if they send me something, if I really need it for my army, or if I'm going to do, like, a store campaign or something, because there, there wasn't a one manager, a good friend of mine, a friend of the channel, he's actually, we've spoken a few times on uh, on online, um, not currently working with the company, but uh, when he was managing, he left, uh, whilst I was there, actually, he left. Um, but he'd been there for about 10, 15 years, and he said, no, I, like, literally all the time, I, I make decent money because I'm living, he said, I would, I'm living with my partner, and she's a doctor. So we're li I'm, I'm just basically allowed to be in this job because of that, because we're okay, we're, we're, we're doing okay for money, and you know, I'm pulling in, like, 40% of our money, which is fine, but I'm enjoying it, and I'm a good partner because of that. I'm, I'm very happy. Which is worth its weight in gold to her, you know, which is great, very healthy. Uh, but he couldn't afford to do his own hobby. He literally couldn't afford it. And so when he would do a campaign and he'd invite customers to come in and say, hey, come on, and they'd be buying their own models, he, and they'd be like, oh, are you going to play? And he's like, uh, no. <laughs> Why? Um, I, I, uh, uh, mm -mm. you know, and eventually he got sick of having to um and ah his way out of this situation. And he went, you know what? I'm going to loan lost a load of fucking Elder. I'm going to play in this. That's it, because they all want me to. So and it's not even in the games workshop; it's somewhere else. It's like an event somewhere else that he was, he was making. So he did that. Like once a month, he would get one or two boxes of Eldar. He'd known lost them, or he'd say he'd known lost them for for a store event. He said, "Like I'm doing a store event, and I want some Eldar to be in, in a diorama." Bullshit, really. It was for him, but you know that's how we put it in, and he'd do it that way. As a games workshop manager, there are ways and means to make sure that you get what you need. Even if you have to beg, borrow, or steal, there are ways and means to get what you need to make sure that you are being. How do I? How do I? How do I put this? That you are being a good representative to the hobby. Because as far as I'm concerned, if you're a games workshop manager and you're not doing the hobby yourself, then you're not a good representative of the hobby because you're not collecting anything. You should be collecting stuff, right? That that, that should be how it how it is. Um, you shouldn't be putting your money back in your own till. At least you should be getting one thing a month, and then you know. Let's be honest. Let, let, you, you don't get paid enough to be, be doing full-time uh, uh, 40k, which is, you know, a shame, but is what it is. So, staff nights out. Let's go into so, let's go into so one staff night out. So, I, I had one big staff night out. Um, one when I left my store, when I left my... Uh, I was going to be a manager somewhere else, uh, where we ended up going out in our local town and getting absolutely drunk, steaming. Um, not much to write home about, right? It, it was just a normal, normal... Uh, going out but the other time was when we went to warhammer world now this is the more interesting one so i had a few days off uh, and a few of my colleagues had a few days off as well so we decided to get together at warhammer world in nottingham and um, we're going to go out and have a few beers and then head to warhammer world and play a few games and then get trashed um so we go out in nottingham first and we're having a few beers uh, male to female ratio in Nottingham is pretty good, by the way. Um, uh, there's more more women than men there, so we're having a good time, you know, having a jolly, having having a knees up, and at about 
yeah, we, we'd gone out for lunch, and then at about three o'clock, we went, okay, time to go down to Lenton. You know, we, we got in a taxi. We didn't get the tram because couldn't be bothered. So we got in a taxi, went down to Lenton. We got out, went straight in, played a few games, and uh, they knew we were staff, which was really, really cool. Um, we, we walked in, and, and we they, they knew who we were. We you know, scanned our way in to, to get some, so we bought some models. The best thing to do as a staff member at Games Workshop, because they don't let you walk around Warhammer World with your stuff on, right? Because even when we've had retail workshops in the past, if you go to Warhammer World straight after the retail workshop, if it was in Nottingham, and you're wearing your Games Workshop t-shirt, they will take you aside and have a go at you. And say, you shouldn't be here with your Games Workshop stuff on, because you don't work here. It's like, uh but I work for the company, like, and I've just come from the retail workshop. What do you want me to do? You know? Um, whatever, right? Didn't make sense to me, but it is what it is. Because uh, they even wear, like, different um, T-shirts. The Warhammer World T-shirts aren't the same as the normal Warhammer, if somebody's in a, in a, in a store of T-shirts. They're not the same ones. Um, well, at least they weren't when I was there, so I, I didn't see what the, what the problem was, but there we go. So we were in our normal clothes. What you need to do if you're working Games Workshop or you're ever lucky enough to go and work for them, if you go to Warhammer World, make sure you have your name tag in your pocket. Um, because then, uh, they can search for you on the system, but, you know, it's a pain in the arse. And make sure you have enough money to go and get yourself a few models. So you go in, you buy you, you buy something from the Warhammer store or the Forge World store, and you use your discount, you use your, your staff discount. They now know that you're a staff member, and that gets you a lot of... You'll get on the tables quicker, right? You won't be kicked off the tables... Even when it even when it closes, you can be there all night. You can just stand there until like they, they literally lock up the building if you want to, right? Um, they'll let you over to the Twitch if there's a Twitch stream going on. You can go over there and say hi. You know, you can go over there and you know get involved. Uh, you're allowed to use all the ex ex uh, exhibitions for free. I mean, why you'd want to, I don't know, because once you've been through it once, you know, unless you've changed something, you know, it's still cool to look at, but you know, not like the the third fourth time in. Um, so we went and we had a really good time. We did a bit. We played a few games in the in the hobby in the the hobby part in the big hall. Um, and after that, we went and went into Bugman's Bar and we sat down and we're, we're sitting there. There's four of us at this point. And we're sitting there and we're like, yeah, yeah, cool, yeah. yeah. And uh, we, I go to the bars, get the round in as you do. Good friend, you know what I mean. First round, go, yeah, yeah. I got four pints of Bugman's 4X, please, you know, whatever. Uh, and yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, give me the four pints. Gives me the gives me the beers, and I give her £20. And she looks at me and goes, oh, okay. And I, I give her my, I go, oh, by the way, I've got this. It's my employee thing. I go, oh, yeah, yeah, she scans it. And I'm thinking, oh, I'll probably get some points. They're not going to give us 50% off on the drinks. It fucking was. <laughs> so you get 50% off your drinks as well. So I ended up getting about about £14 back from this £20 note. Uh, so I walked over and I sat down with the rest of the lads and I said, um, I think we're going to die because it was Friday night and the bar was filling up with staff because it, you know, it was the weekend and everyone was letting the hair down a little bit. And I was like, this is 50% off. I'm not going to make it home. I, I'm just not going to make it home. So... Um, that's one of the, the really good memories about Games Workshop is that night, is like being there at night and being surrounded by like-minded people who are all talking and, and laughing and getting on with things. We had a Blood Bowl game kick off, not literally, obviously, but on a, on one of the tables as, as people playing Blood Bowl and having a really good time. And they were all staffers. There was hardly any members of the general public there because we were close to closing, but obviously these guys can stay in there as long as they want. Um, so we're, we're just getting there, we're getting trolleyed. And... It goes to about half eleven, and I realise, oh shit, like we've missed our tram, like like, like we we've missed our way way back to the Airbnb. Like I don't know what we're gonna do, because it wasn't that far away. Well, it, it was it was a little bit away. Yeah, we, I was thinking, oh, it's only about you know, a couple of miles away. I'll tell you what, we'll just we'll just book a taxi. It's fine. You know, we'll we'll go down there. We'll we'll get it. We'll get it sorted. Okay, fine. So we we carried on drinking. And then we drank some more, and we drank some more, and uh, we were regaled with a few tales of Games Workshop past, which are being used for future videos, not not this one. And we stagger out of there, we stagger down the stairs, thinking, oh my god, you know, we make such a show of ourselves because we're so effing pissed. 
we walk out and we start calling our taxi and, and bear in mind it's it's summer but it's England you know what I mean it's not it's not that warm so we're, we're calling this taxi and and lo and behold none of them are turning up and especially none of them want to drive out to Lenton because it's quite far away from obviously the centre of town so we're sitting there freezing our bollocks off and somebody comes out and, and it, there's a girl and and three lads and they, they come out and one of them works for for White Dwarf and which is pretty cool um, we've been speaking to them all night and just, just you know, having a good time. And uh, the girl says, oh, well, we're going to go down to, to my house for, you know, for a few drinks. Do you guys want to come with? You were like, all right, fine. Yeah, cool. So we, we so we went to their house. Um, About, I'd say, about five-minute drive away, I'd say. You know, carried on drinking. And um, literally... Uh, well, let's just say that uh, somebody, it wasn't me, somebody had a bit of weed on them. So, so we, we went and, you know, you know, partook in that and uh, did did some other things because a party kicked off. A few of her, a few other of her friends came out and a little bit of a party kicked off. We had a few more, you know, recreational um, hors d'oeuvres. And needless to say, we left there about six in the morning. And we walked out and staggered away. I had somebody's tie wrapped around my head. I don't know where that came from. Somebody tied their tie around my head. And we were walking and I didn't know where to go. I had a low phone battery. And I was like, oh no, oh no. And I had that really horrible paranoid feeling because I was on a come down. And so were the other lads. We were all on a real come down. So we were like, oh, what are we doing? So I get my phone out and I'm like, oh, where are we going? Where are we going? And I can see, lo and behold, our flat where we're staying, our Airbnb, is a straight line walk. Brilliant. I'm thinking, brilliant. Just what we need. Straight line walk. I bought some bacon and eggs before we got in yesterday. Got some bread. We'll have a few bacon butties and we'll go to bed and chill out. You know, we'll be, no, separately, obviously. <laughs> like, we'll go to bed and chill out and it'll be fine. I didn't see the time on the Google Maps. So we started walking. Uh, let alone behold, we started walking about six. We got home for about half nine. Um, just walking in a straight line back home. And all three of us, Games Workshop staffers, are... Okay, so... I had this scarf that my nan got for me, right? And, you know... Um, so I had it wrapped around my head and I'd lost it the night before. And I was really close to my nan, right? And I was also on a come down. Don't make fun of me. I was also on a come down. And the other two lads are talking about models. And we lost one of them. Like, one of our lads had just stayed behind. I think he pulled. So we stayed behind. So I'm walking home. They're all talking about models. And I just start crying. I literally just start crying. And they're like, are you alright? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, my nan got me that, 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 that scarf. It's a bit... It's a bit horrible, you know what I mean? Um, again, put his hand on my shoulder. And this is another Games Workshop manager, by the way. Put his hand on my shoulder. And he goes, I know what you mean, mate. And he starts crying. And I, was, and I and the part of my brain didn't go off like, what do you mean you know what you mean? Did you have a scarf that you also lost that your grandma gave to you? Right? So we're walking along. We're crying. Um, and we do this for about an hour. Uh, until like we f finally figure out that you know we're nearly home, right? We're nearly home at this point. We stagger in, and we drag ourselves. We don't even have any bacon butties. We drag ourselves upstairs, and I I go straight to bed. You know, I wake up, and I am so paranoid. Like we're sitting there, and I think someone's going to kick in the door at this point. And like you know, there's nothing worse in, in the world than the, than the feeling of paranoia. Like, uh, uh, and I think someone's going to kick the door in. And start having a go at us, or I think we're going to get sacked. You know, um, little did I know that you know everybody at the party was like you know um, you know twenty five to thirty. You know, this is what happens. You know, you, you just go and you have fun. Um, so anyway, I come back to my store on this is the the Wednesday because I booked Monday and Tuesday off Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then um, you get Monday and Tuesday off anyway. So I booked off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then went in on on the the Monday and Tuesday. Uh, sorry, not went in on Monday, Tuesday. I had it off anyway. So uh, I went in back in on the Wednesday. And I got a phone call. And this is from head office. And 
you know, I, I pick up the phone and, and, and there's a, this, this this lovely lady on the other end says, hey, you know, it's so-and-so from head office. And, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And I'm dreading this now. I'm like, oh, my God, what's going on? And she said, um, we found your scarf. We've got a scarf here that was left at somebody's house. <laughs> that was brought in. Um, and I said, oh, right, what do you mean? Like, like uh, how do you know it's mine? I said, oh, well, somebody saw you wearing it. And so, yeah, we, we assumed that it was it was yours. And I was like, oh, brilliant. Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, please send it. And in my next delivery, right back to the start of our session today, my next delivery in of stock, right on top of the delivery of stock, was my was my scarf with a note from this lovely lady at, at a head office with a few, you know, you know, here's your scarf, you know, blah, blah, blah. Had a really nice time. You know, hope to see you all again, kiss, 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 you know. Really cool. Really lovely people. And that's the end of my story. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I mean... Look, for all of their faults, the, the, the people on the ground floor of Games Workshop most of the time are absolute diamonds. Um, do a lot of them want to dry hump you when you go into a store? No. Absolutely not. Are they made to by their managers? Yes. Yes. Because the managers don't want to lose their jobs. And that's just how it is. Okay? Um, I really, 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 really loved a lot of the people that I worked at the King's Workshop. I had such a good time with a lot of them. Um, I remember uh, making the manager of Hemel Hempstead like nearly spit out his drink at one of the retail workshops. We'll get into that on another story. We we were just messing about and I told a joke that really that went really well. Um, but like, yeah. If you can get into a place like that and, and you can stay there and, and, and you get along with people, stay in it because it just works. It just works. So... That is my story. If you like the video, subscribe. Do all that fun stuff. Um, you know, my Patreon is down there. If you fancy buying me a beer, because you know, if you don't know anything, buy my stories. You know, I like beer. And uh, the Discord is there too. If you want to join us and have a have a nice laugh, have a talk, Discord is a great place to go, man. We've got a lot of cool stuff going on. Uh, we got a a showcase video coming probably tomorrow with a bit of Warhammer Law two, and then in the new in the week in the new week. We will be doing some uh, Empress Children lore, which should be pretty cool. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Love you all. Stay safe. And I'll see you next time.